Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us today here on our discussion on red team engagements. My name is Gavin Wood, and I'm really excited to be here as CEO of CyberLab. Uh, hopefully, you've all seen our intro into who CyberLab are, but for those of you who haven't, I'll give a very brief intro um, to us at CyberLab. Since um, the acquisition of Forces in 2017, Chess ICT had been on a, a journey to become a cybersecurity powerhouse. Um, in 2021, um, we employed 15 of the UK's top penetration testers, uh, and they joined the company through the acquisition of Armadillo Cybersecurity Services, or ARMSEC as we know it. This brought not only additional Crest services and testing services to our organization, but also the NCSC's check capabilities for portfolio as well, giving us the ability to run security testing um, where the customer done demands the highest levels um, of standards for their organization. Um, in April um, of this year, Ch um, out of Chess ICT, we formed CyberLab, a new organization that is a spe specialist cybersecurity consultancy, providing a range of security testing, compliance, and managed security services, um, including cybersecurity as a service, uh, into, our, into our organization. Um, and it's my great pleasure to announce the formation of CyberLab, our new cybersecurity focus organization, and we're really dedicated to bringing the best cybersecurity and product services to our customers. With the ever-present and continuing growth of cybersecurity threats, now is the time to double down on cybersecurity and help make your business as secure as possible. So joining me today to discuss red teaming and its place in security testing programs are Wayne Price, Commercial Director, and David Dixon, Pre-Sales Consultant. So um, red teaming and red team engagements. Um, so red team engagements allow organizations to gain a holistic view their security posture and how resilient they are against defending against advanced and determined attackers. So given what I've just said about red teaming, um, could you both give me an overview of what red teaming actually is? Yeah, sure, I can take this one. So uh, a red team engagement is an attack simulation designed to simulate uh, what we'd call advanced persistent threats or uh, APTs, um, effectively to measure uh, how well an organization can withstand an attack from a real life uh, scenario uh, using a wide range of sophisticated methods that an attacker might use. Uh, they better prepare your organization for the unexpected. Uh, they offer more of a, as you said, a holistic, authentic uh, view of an organization's cybersecurity maturity uh, and resilience to the current threat landscape. Um, these engagements are often conducted over a period of several weeks. They can range anywhere from 40 to 80 days. Um, as opposed to doing a more focused penetration test where a customer will tell us exactly what they want testing uh, and where. Um, and these they are usually much shorter engagements. Uh, the reason red team engagements are delivered over much uh, longer timescales, it's usually to simulate as much as possible the, the realistic timeline that an attacker would, uh, would adopt um, if they were trying to um, get to that organization. Um, ultimately, uh, they with the goal of you know trying to achieve what their their desired goals are. They depend on how high their motivations are. They could spend as much time as they can realistically afford on it. Um, but unfortunately, in the real world, that doesn't necessarily line up with their clients' budgets or you know time expectations or uh, constraints. So um, typically, it's not always um, feasible for a client to to go for a full red team engagement. Um, as I mentioned, it doesn't always fit in with those parameters. Um, so typically, um, shorter, you know, penetration tests, authenticated penetration tests is what they would go for. The stipulation with penetration tests is while it will potentially uncover every and all vulnerabilities uh, within the testing time frame um, that a uh, consultant will be looking for um, and permitted to look for, it doesn't necessarily uh, demonstrate how well or how resilient uh, or your people, processes, and technology would respond to a threat in the real world. Um, a good example could be a sophisticated phishing email. You know, you could invest uh, all the money in the world in the best technology uh, and uh, systems to protect yourself um, from sophisticated threats. But all it takes is one click on an email, and an attacker could be easily within your infrastructure. Um, so really, uh, and that, again, that's something that a pen test wouldn't necessarily uncover. Of course, there's things like phishing campaigns that organizations run, uh, but really what a red team engagement is doing is combining all those different uh, approaches together to see how well um, all the different layers of your cybersecurity strategy work in the face of a, a real adversary. Fantastic. Wayne, have you got anything to add to that? Yeah, so um, there's, there's multiple phases within the engagement, and really it starts off 
um, with uh, a sort of project initiation and planning phase. Um, this it, it, this uh, creates a, a kind of risk assessment and risk register. Um, from there, it'll kind of move on to uh, an open source um, intelligence phase and reconnaissance. So there'll be an element of trying to identify uh, what information is out there about the particular organization, about key employees within the organization, um, with a view to hopefully finding some information that, that might be able to be leveraged uh, to form the kind of next next phases of the of the engagement. From there, uh, it goes through a phase of kind of staging, um, configuring and, and testing um, the sort of various payloads and the, the methods of, of attack. Um, preparation in terms of standing up any infrastructure that, that may need to be built to form part of the, the attack. Uh, and, and all these stages are the, the same stages that um, you know a real threat actor would go, would go th go through. So they they very much replicate that that methodology. Um, there'd be various tests of of payloads and and, and the attack functions. Um, the sort of agreement of of targets would be confirmed with the senior members of the of the client team. Um, and then really it goes on to the sort of exploitation um, phase. So this is the targeting of uh, users or systems or processes um, to, to carry out the attack. You kind of move on to the uh, sort of reporting phase. Um, so that's where the reports are, are produced, uh, which cover the engagement. And um, and then typically there's a, a, a results and a presentation and technical findings uh, workshop um, where um, the actual process of the engagement is talked through with the client in great detail. Um, to identify sort of all the key lessons learned um, and uh, and then sort of pass that over to the client to then take actions within their organization to um, to help their security posture. Given what you've, you what you both said, we also often hear the term tiger teaming uh, when we're talking about um, uh, more, I suppose, elevated, more mature types of security testing um, and often um, interchange with red teaming. So, uh, what's the difference then between um, red uh, red teaming and, and, and tiger team engagement? Tiger team, at least as as we we understand it, um, the difference between red teaming is uh, effectively a, a much more consolidated approach to red teaming, while still following the the same methodology or or a more kind of scaled down uh, methodology that you expect to find in a red team engagement. Um, it's still a simulation. It's not a simulated exercise. Um, it's still replicate going to replicate um, as much as possible within the time frame uh, methods and steps that um, that an attacker would utilize to achieve their goals um, the same steps that Wayne uh, mentioned um, but usually under a much much tighter time scale so as I mentioned uh, in your first question typical red teams are you know scoped over a period of weeks and delivered over a period of weeks uh, tiger team engagements uh, can deliver a similar output but over a much smaller period of time so usually over a handful of days um, and this is really because uh, it's been designed to meet the clients uh, requirements in terms of budget um, uh, deadlines and uh, time and time constraints so uh, the caveat there is the the less time we have to deliver the engagement so typically a target team investment uh, and sorry engagement the best way to look at it is is uh, almost like a mini red team engagement, if, uh, if that makes sense. So the general stages are the same, but more condensed to a specific uh, number of targets. Wayne mentioned the word targets there, and targets being the the crown jewels, again, another phrase, yeah. uh, the crown jewels that you're going for, but so limit the scope um, rather than being more general. Exactly, or, or we can do them bespoke. It doesn't necessarily have to follow every and all stage that a typical uh, that you might expect to find in a typical engagement uh, following the uh, the um, cyber attack kill chain. Um, it could be that they just want to replicate a specific scenario. So it could be an assumed compromise, uh, assumed being that we start the engagement from the point of an attacker has been successful and gained ingress into their network. That can be from uh, any number of scenarios. It could be from a a successful phishing campaign. It could be from a compromised set of credentials that we were able to obtain through methods of social engineering, through scouring uh, certain users' social media profiles, um, any information that we can find on the uh, public internet. Um, that That's pretty much alluding to the uh, OSINT uh, or open source intelligence gathering uh, phase that Wayne alluded to earlier. 
Um, so typically, in my experience, we've had clients where uh, they've asked us to re replicate a scenario, starting from that point of assumed compromise, um, or we could create um, a, a payload and set up a, an infrastructure for the attack designed to replicate a specific scenario. It might be one that they've encountered in the past. It could be, say, a ransomware attack, and they want to test the metal of their organization since they recovered and remediated from that attack. And they want to see if there's any new or hidden vulnerabilities they didn't remediate previously that could still mean an attacker could get in the same way and they end up in the same position. But what, was, what would be the difference then between a red team or a cyber team engagement? And how, how, what, how does that differ from a standard pen test engagement um, that, that we would do for um, a lot of our client base? So with uh, regular pen testing, uh, as, as I mentioned before, we're really just working to the client's uh, needs uh, and we're limited to that. So for example, if a client uh, has a new web application um, or they might be uh, their infrastructure that requires testing, either their external public facing network or their internal uh, infrastructure that they want us to pen test, um, we'll try um, We'll try from two different approaches, usually both an unauthenticated and authenticated perspective, um, particularly when it comes to application testing. Um, unauthenticated being that we know what the target is. You know, so we know what the web app is or the mobile app, for example, uh, but the client is not providing us with any credentials or any levels of access. Um, they will give us the information we need to scope the application. So usually that's discussed during the, the scoping phase um, that we mentioned earlier. Um, and we'll try part for part of the testing phase to see if we can gain access without any credentials. Can we bypass any login functionality? Can we circumvent any authentication mechanisms to get into the application? Um, secondly, we'll then try from an authenticated perspective, which is pretty much just the opposite of what I described, where we do use credentials. So we'll either have users configured or we'll have um, uh, internal access into a network where we wouldn't be able to access it publicly. Um, so for example, you know, um, no person should be able to just access a client's uh, internal corporate infrastructure. Uh, it should be protected by firewalls and various other parameters. Uh, there should be, you know, things like VPN access required. So if we're needed to test those things, obviously the client will need to give us those uh, levels of access in order to, for us to conduct the, uh, the penetration test. So effectively, the client knows exactly what we're testing and what methods we're, we're going to be using. A red teaming is uh, effectively there's a primary and sometimes a secondary objective, uh, as Wayne mentioned. So uh, it could be that there's a server uh, that is full of client data or highly sensitive corporate informational assets that uh, the client absolutely would not want getting out into the public sphere. Uh, and that's what we they might want us to try and hit. They might want us to see how vulnerable is their crown jewels. Usually the, the, the only thing that we're limited by is the amount of time that we have to actually achieve those objectives. And also a red team engagement doesn't necessarily have to have a designated specific primary objective. They might just want to know how much damage can an attacker do? How much harm can they do once inside the network? Again, within uh, within a limited time frame. That's great. Thank you very much for that, David. Quick final question then um, for Wayne. Red team is often seen as something that large organizations do. Do you think that's true and how can smaller um, organizations get the same advantage? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the biggest um, the, the biggest sort of challenge typically for kind of small or medium organizations is, is the cost of a full red team engagement. Um, you know, as I think David said, you know, they can range anywhere from 50, 60, 70 days worth of, of, of engagement. And that typically, uh, you know, accounts to quite a number of thousands of pounds worth of worth of testing. And, and so that typically that's been the, the, the biggest barrier. So um, what what we've what we tend to do at the moment and we found really popular with kind of small and medium clients is is taking very much a kind of modular approach. And it's just taking that idea of the tiger team testing, which tends to be a much more focused engagement. Um, and using that um, to kind of break down the typical red team, um, the red team stages. So for example, um, you know, if we're talking to a client and their biggest concern is around, um, you know, what information is out there um, in the wider world, then we would just carry out a focused, um, a focused engagement based on discovering what information is actually out there, both on the dark web, um, social media, et cetera and provide a, a comprehensive report on exactly sort of what that digital footprint looks for that client. Fantastic. Thanks very much for that, Wayne. 
And I think that's pretty much all we've got time for. So um, thank you very much for your input. Um, really interesting. Um, and thank you for everyone who joined the call. Uh, is there anything, if there's anything that you uh, found of interest or anything you'd like to discuss further, um, please feel free to reach out to your account manager, reach out to me, Wayne, or David directly, um, or look on our website, chessict.co.uk, um, for further information. Thank you very much.